Good day, everybody, and welcome to D18 Tonight. Tonight, we are picking up the pace, heading straight into the general elections, which happens in November. Don't forget that. With us tonight are two senatorial candidates who made it through very impressively into the next round. Republican Julia Santos, who finished at number seven for the GOP. Off today, Jason. Yeah, hey, congratulations. Very nice work. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, of course, Democrat Dr. Kelly marsh Titano, who finished number 10. Very, very nice. Today and to do is Masi. Well, thank you so much. And we want to encourage everybody to join us on Facebook Live because we are streaming right now and we are taking your questions. I'm going to ask a couple of these, but we're going to be a little bit more conversational. You know, last time it was a very finite amount of time that we gave you. Today we can kind of let some of the more concepts and your ideas breathe, if that's all right with you guys. Sure, that sounds great. Okay, cool. Right. Julius, you've done this, this kind of work for long enough and you've, <laughs> never had, you've never had a problem filling time on the air. So. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Oh, it doesn't mean it's still not nerve-wracking. Okay, so. well, no problem. We'll, we'll make it for, convenient for you guys. So please, everybody, jump on Facebook Live, put in your questions. Um, I'm going to kick this off because, of course, you both finished very, very well, and you realize that it only gets harder from here, heading into the general. Um, you're both, like, very impressively in the middle of the pack, but now you've got the final group of 30. Only 15 will advance to make the 35th Guam legislature. Um, Dr. Titano, I'd like to start with you. What did you learn from the experience of going through the primary and what do you what are you focus on focusing on now heading into the general well part of uh, my experience i had uh, i'm an, an anthropologist by trade and so i had a little bit of that anthropological eye yeah. where observing what was happening and i think until you actually go through it you never really appreciate it fully mm -hmm. and so going through it you learn that it really is about a lot of sacrifices it's about a lot of time it's about a lot of commitment and really making sure that um, that is what you want to do you have to reaffirm all of that mm -hmm. and i i really appreciated getting to meet so many people in our community, uh, really that's my biggest takeaway. Through the Liberation Day Parade, through the Labor Day event that we just had, um, and through the various events where people just coming up, mm -hmm. people coming up and uh, expressing their concerns or showing their support, it was such a privilege to meet so many people, I really must say. Going into the future, um, just, doing more of the same, really thinking about strategizing, um, having a stronger message, developing my platform as a senator and the ways that I feel I can truly help the community. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting from an anthropological standpoint too, which is of course the discipline of tracking the migration of people and I guess, you know, the trends, what people are thinking, who they're following in, the, in this mm -hmm. case as a politician. That's got to be nerve wracking. Well, it certainly is interesting. So. Um, just continuing to reach out to, we have a very diverse community and continuing to reach out to all of them and um, be able to hear them, be able to understand their concerns, but then also be able to figure out ways that we can be bridging our relations so that we are working closer and better together for all of us. Certainly. Okay, Julie, same question to you, if I may, because you, know, you, you came on this show like a few weeks ago, you stated your platform, you communicated that to us. Um, how challenging was that to actually get that message across and let voters know, you know, why this is important and why you're the right man to execute on that plan? That's really a great question, and thank you for asking that, Jason. The uh, interesting thing was when people would ask me about my platform, it kind of addressed one of my biggest weaknesses in campaigning, and that's coming from a media background where I'm so used to talking, right? And we, we don't spend a lot of time listening. And so that's what was that? I didn't, I didn't hear that. <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> and so that's one of the challenges um, that, that I really took upon myself. And, and, and it's what, you know, a lot of my, my uh, the advisors on my team uh, highlighted, right? The, the best thing that you can do is listen to people. And so when people would ask me what my platform is, my, I, w I would, you know, thank them for the question. And, and then I would ask them, I, you know, please tell me what's important to you. And in listening to you and what your concerns and what your problems are, that allows me to be able to, as Kelly was mentioning earlier, really connect as to how, how my platform will actually uh, affect your life and potentially improve the quality of your life. Mm -hmm. And so those conversations were um, just really so empowering for, for myself as a candidate and just truly humbling, 
because you get to listen to people and you really get the insight in, in their everyday lives and, and you realize there are so many things that connect us with, with what our stresses are and what our concerns are, just the nuances that are different because we're different individuals. All right, very well. So we are going to get to your questions, you on Facebook and you watching live on KUM TV. We've got some good ones already in the stream and keep them coming because Julius and Kelly will answer them when D18 Tonight returns. <music> healthy smile is an expression of confidence. The more confident you are about your smile, the more likely you are to fully express your feelings without having to worry about the way your teeth look. Before cosmetic dentistry, I didn't smile as much. I didn't have the confidence, and it shows. And since I've had cosmetic dentistry done, I feel 10 times more confident. I make my initial introduction with a nice big smile and a handshake, and I just you know, feel like it really is a relationship builder, a nice warm smile, and it makes the clients and customers feel more comfortable with you feeling confident, and they feel that you're not just there for business, that you're also there kind of as a friend as well. So, I mean, it's amazing how powerful a smile can be. A good smile. <laughs> Since your smile makes a significant impression on those around you, it is important that it makes the impression you want it to make. We continue live on KUM TV 8 and streaming on Facebook Live. This is D18 tonight. And joining us tonight on the Blue Suede Couch, our first time candidates, Julia Santos and Dr. Kelly Mars Titan, representing the GOP and the Democrat Party of Guam, respectively. Hafidi, and congratulations once again. Oh. All right, we are going to get right into the questions. Now, we started with Kelly the last time. Julius, I'd like to start with you. Sure. If that's, if that's fair, Doc. Um, and this is a great question. This comes from Faith Sinagasi. Now, remember, you can get your questions into on Facebook Live. Same question to both of you. Um, Faith asks, and Julius is interesting because you were talking about doing a lot of boots on the ground work, you know, talking to people. Uh, Faith asks, what do you feel is your weakest demographic? And that's important as a first-time yeah, candidate. Yeah, you know, um, I, 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 I don't take anything for granted, and so I just kind of assume that I need to work in every area all the time. Um, I guess if I had to, if one comes to mind, I, I need to go on and talk to more veterans. Mm. Uh, and, and figure out what the challenges uh, that they face are and the kind of opportunities they're looking for so that um, they can be empowered. Uh, I think they, they would be at the top of my list right now. And of course, it's not to say that there is no other uh, constituency that I need to reach out to and demographic that I need to reach out to. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's the first one that really pop, pops to mind. Was there a particular group when you were doing your campaigning, Julius, that maybe, you know, reached out to you because you know I'm, mm. sure, I'm sure faith isn't saying you know in any particular area sure. of failure sure. they're just saying you know was was there a particular gender or age demographic or ethnic group that like kind of like reached out to you gave you any sort of feedback you know gave you gave you criticism uh, all of them okay <laughs> and, Which and is I'm, good yeah and I'm grateful for that you know um, if it, I'm sure Kelly un understands this you if you kind of throw yourself in there and, and and decide to be a candidate you need to be open to everything uh, especially criticism mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Dr. Kelly Marsh, right. I, I would assume that you Definitely would be, you you would be open to feedback given your academic background. Definitely. It, it helps you grow. And better to hear it early yeah. where you can develop an approach and a strategy and then a way to hopefully resolve it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think one of the things that I focused on, well, first of all, we've done a fantastic job this year. We have something around 54,000 registered voters. Yep. 
So that's amazing, but then it does become a little daunting reaching out to and trying to make sure that 54,000 people actually know who you are. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of what I focused on was helping people understand that I had been part of the community for a long time. I've been here since, now when I tell my students, I kind of cough a little, cover it up a little, but I've been here since the 60s. And so I wanted people to understand that um, I have been here a long time. I have been part of the community for that length of time. And so in that, I've developed networks, but also an understanding of who we are and issues that we're dealing with. Of course, there's always more to hear. And uh, as Julius was saying, from the various demographics there, I always want to be hearing more. So um, I, I think that's what I focused on, at least for me. But I do like that question. That question helps the people of the island understand who we are a little bit more and mm -hmm. maybe in ways that they might help us understand issues or their concerns or their community a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. to that question and everything, was there a particular demographic that you feel you could reach better in the next couple of months? Well, that's a good point. I would say we have the uh, forum coming up for the young professionals. And so I think that would be a very good demographic to have those that are in the, the world of business, the entrepreneurs and uh, so forth. Perhaps they're a demographic that don't know me as well. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of work for decades about culture and history and historic preservation. So obviously they know me pretty well. Mm -hmm. But um, for that part of the community, and I'm a small business owner myself actually, uh, I think this will be a very good opportunity, these forums coming up, to be able to help them understand who I am and help me make sure that I'm developing my platform so that it also addresses their concerns and needs. Okay, well, you are going to love this next question because this uh -huh. comes to us from Manyeka Flores, good friend of ours. So, Manyeka, hello to you and thank you for this question, but we got to ask you to sit tight for 30 seconds because we go back to Julius for this okay. one. Manyeka asked Julius, where does the protection of historic and cultural resources fit into your platform. You've always been very, very proud of your heritage right. and, and you Absolutely. promote that. Yes. How does this fit into your political platform though? Uh, well, when we talk about originally when I was here and really economic growth, right, diversification of industry, part of that plan is to create a commerce for culture because the individuals who dedicate their lives to preserving and perpetuating our culture and practicing in, in, our, in our ancient traditions, they deserve the tools and the resources that they need. And a really, government can only do so much, right? I mean, we're looking at all the issues with the fiscal budget right now. So how can we create a commerce for culture that can, where they can be empowered and be pseudo entrepreneurs in that sense, right? Where we have this partnership and they work to preserve and perpetuate the culture and through their work, we can generate revenue in the private sector. Okay, that will very help, interesting. You know, yeah, because a lot of people think that, you know, traditional ways and, you know, and modern capitalism often don't mix. But right. no, that's, a, that's a very fair point. I mean, uh, one, one thing that uh, I've really been talking about a lot is uh, probably creating something for our Zoomti. Zo there could be some type of a botanical healing garden, right, where our Zoomti can grow the natural herbs that they use. And it can almost be... Um, I would say like the, the academy in a sense where they actually live there, they practice their art there, and individuals can go there, right? And we can kind of validate the work that they do, and through doing that, perhaps maybe even one day your insurance can cover that. Mm -hmm. So rather than going and getting traditional, or I say traditional, but Western medicine, you can actually opt and go to the botanical healing garden with the Zoomti and pay for their services in that sense. Now, I know that Zoomti don't want to be businessmen and women in that sense, so it would be the facility that would be operating the business and the Zoomti would be there to facilitate the healing. Okay, very nice. Okay, so Kelly, I know you've been patiently sitting as soon as, as soon as we brought up the topic of cultural and historic preservation and everything, so please enlighten us on your plans. Right, so there are so many ways that we are rich as a community and it's um, because of our uniqueness, the cultural traditions that we have, the historic preservation and the cultural sites that we have, and these can very much go into economic models. So we can further develop uh, environmental and cultural tourism. We can have these specialized cultural um, ex experiences. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I was mm -hmm. struggling on that word, but experiences. So how often do you get to go to a place and learn how to throw a talata or be able to have uh, an, an experience where you stay with a family and you get to 
do family fishing and go out to those events. So there are many, many ways that this actually can intertwine and develop it uh, for our tourism industry. But not only that, as I'm, I've mentioned before when I was here, is that it can be a grassroots development where the money is going more directly into the pockets of the cultural entrepreneurs, the cultural practitioners, and yes. the families, and so forth. And then that money stays and circulates here. All right. Yeah. Okay, we'll tell you what, we have more of your questions when D18 Tonight returns. Win adventure in the ITE Explore Your World Million Mile Giveaway. Every week from July 16 to November 2nd, we're giving away 60,000 United Mileage Plus miles to ITE postpaid and prepaid subscribers. Imagine where you could go. Go on a weekend getaway to the Philippines. Enjoy fresh sushi in Japan. Eat a dakimas. Sip a latte at a cafe in Paris. Or use your miles for shopping and other rewards. It's your world. Explore it. I know a thing or two about chicken, and I love these new honey barbecue glaze tenders. Maybe because they're sweet, like me. Oh, he's just gonna love this. Adorbs. Or maybe because they're spicy, like me. Thank you for the sweater. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Introducing McDonald's Sweet and Spicy Honey Barbecue Glazed Tenders. Made with all white meat chicken, hand tossed and glazed to order. They're the perfect combination of sweet and spicy, just like grandma. Has it started? The Down Syndrome Association of Guam exists to support families of individuals with Down Syndrome. We're a group of parents who have children with Down Syndrome and know the joys and challenges of raising them. For more information about the health, development, and education of a child or adult with Down Syndrome, please contact Vicki Ariola at 472-6114. Welcome back, everybody. Your questions cap off and lead off, I should say, another epi action-packed episode of D18. Tonight, we're going to start with Dr. Kelly Marsh Titano, first-time candidate. This one comes from Angela Leongreo Santos. Angela, thank you very much, Sidious Masi, for this question. Angela is asking Doc about the topic of diversity and inclusion, very, very big societal issues these days. Uh, Angela is saying, what is your position on LGBTQ issues in our community, and what will you do to promote equality? Well, I definitely believe in equality. Um, that's one of the positions that really motivates me is when I feel sense of injustice uh, for a variety of issues, but certainly um, having people being treated equally is extremely important to me. And so I would support that, mm -hmm. um, that as a concept and um, work with anyone that is working on a bill or they see that there is a place that that can be improved. Mm -hmm. That's certainly a very, very important part of our, of our island community. Julie, same question to you um, on the topic of equality, increasing right. um, diversity and mm -hmm. things like that. Like what is, what is your platform? Well, Guam is a, an extremely diverse island. When you look at the population, we have individuals represented from almost every country around the world. And really our strength is in our unity. Right? We have a diverse community, but we're all unified in that we love Guam, we love living here, we want to raise our families here, we want to make it the best place to be. Uh, when it comes to the LGBTQ um, the rights and inequality, I believe that we are all equally protected under the law, and if anybody is not, and if anybody's being discriminated against, I will be the first person to stand next to them and defend their rights to that equality. Okay, well, okay, very fair. Um, another question now. How challenging was it for you as first-time candidates the night of the election? Um, you know, it's... If you haven't gone through it, Kelly, you were talking about during the commercial break, and as you were saying, you know, if you're not ready for it, it can be very, very daunting, obviously very exhausting because it was an all-night affair and everything, but we talked earlier about what you're going to do differently going forward. Uh, what did you learn? What were some of the lessons that you took away from that initial experience? So for the experience overall for that night? Yeah, just for like that night. Oh, for that night. Well, for that night, quite honestly, I did take uh, a few hour nap mm -hmm. <laughs> because I knew that uh, it was going to get more tense as time went on. So I had a quick nap early on and then I stayed up in the wee hours to be able to watch it moment by moment. Mm -hmm. So I think next time around, though, um, 
it will be a longer period of time that we are all working towards that goal. And uh, we will be participating in many more forums and putting ourselves out there even more. So I think for that night in particular, I will be up every minute <laughs> of the hour, each hour, okay. <laughs> until the count is final. There's this thing I hear of, it's called caffeine. Apparently it does wonders. <laughs> yeah. I don't personally yeah. do it, but yeah, it was, it was quite the long night for us. And you know, Julius, as a former member of the media, you know mm. about those long, long yeah. nights and everything like that. So yeah. what was your experience like now being on the other side? Uh, you know, I wasn't as fortunate as Kelly here. I was a nervous wreck the entire night. I tried to take a nap, didn't work out. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, I was, I, I drove to the, uh, the boat headquarters, of course, to, to thank all of the supporters there for all of their help and all of the individuals. And I went to spend time with some family and friends. Uh, and ultimately at the end of the evening, I, um, I went and, uh, sat in my mom's living room and we just kind of, you know, had a late dinner and just chatted while we, while we watched. Because, mm -hmm. um, like I said, I was a nervous wreck the whole night. I don't take anything for granted. It's not over until it's over. That's big of you to actually admit that. Like, some yeah. people might say, you know, I don't want to admit that and everything. But, yeah, I mean, it no, is. You have to prepare for the best. Well, you, 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 can't, you campaign, right, to win, but you still have to prepare for, for a loss. I mean, that's when I went into MMA, Coach Brad McCready, Right? There are two rules. It's one, you need to be ready to get punched in the face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and two is you have to be ready to lose. Because if you're not, then you're not going to be able to compete at the level that you need to. Absolutely. Yeah. Great sports analogy, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so back to the topic of what faces Gov Guam, and some might say what ails Gov Guam. Um, here's a question from somebody that actually emailed us earlier in the day, so thank you for that. This person would rather remain anonymous, mm -hmm. but they're saying, with the financial crisis Kelly uh, Guam currently faces, what are your ideas as far as raising revenue? and creating new revenue streams for the government. Okay, well we touched on that a little bit when we started talking about these uh, cultural economic opportunities. Yep. And so um, another one that fits in my platform is environmental tourism. So our environment, and these fold in in many ways to the health of the community, um, the social ills of the community, but also environmental tourism is something that I've experienced in other places like Singapore. and I. Um, a lot of our tourists that come here are coming from more developed areas. They're coming from cities and places like that. So coming to an island environment is this opportunity for them to understand and experience a tropical forest, a limestone forest. And we have nine ecosystems at least. And so those are at least nine different types of opportunities where we can be bringing people out to experience our special and unique um, ecosystems that have these. The more I find out about our native flora and fauna, so our native plants and animals, like I just saw for the first time the other day a native plumeria. Now, Oh, wow. Yeah. Have you seen our native plumeria? I have run into them a couple times. Yeah. Really? <laughs> they have a completely different sort of petal. And um, so these are opportunities to help us understand more about ourselves, but then be able to showcase that to others. So environmental tourism could be really huge. Um, it could bring in additional resources, but then also help us be keeping our island healthy and happy, which leads to a healthier and happy, healthier and happier community as well. Okay, well, let me kick this over yeah. to Julius. We got about uh, a minute left before we go to commercial oh. break. But yeah, after you left us here at Camp Happy, you went over to Gita. Mm, so you yes. were exposed to a lot of different areas of revenue generation and everything like that. Right. What, what would you take from that experience? Well, uh, as far as taking away from that experience uh, in, in creating... Uh, New revenue streams for government. Well, I mean, there's one that's already staring us in the face we have in medicinal cannabis. I would take it just a half step further and say adult regulated use cannabis, which it would be treated like uh, alcohol and tobacco. And we can go so far as to address the concerns of the, the members in the community who might be apprehensive about it and create green light districts in where we could have these dispensaries and where this is where we can create new businesses, diversify industry, create new jobs. Our homegrown entrepreneurs can now start their businesses and we can actually empower local farmers to now cultivate the product. It would all be locally done mm -hmm. and we would stimulate the economy. We talk about creating an actual revenue source for the hospital. We would creating a new industry and that taxable revenue can be legislated to go directly to the hospital. All right. These are just some of the, you know, solutions that we could come up with. All right, very well. We have got one more commercial break, but stay tuned because we have more of your questions when we return.
It's tough to top an original, so we added to the sides instead. It's the cheesy gordita crunch you know and love, now completely new. The limited edition double cheesy gordita crunch box, only at Taco Bell. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's, offers fully covered loading and unloading area with individual pin-coated gate and door access. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. All right, we're getting to as many of these questions in our Facebook live stream as we can. This one comes from Brandon L. Cruz. Brandon, thanks a lot for this question. Great one. Uh, we'll start with Julius Santos. What political status option, Julius, do you feel is best for Guam? I feel is best for Guam. That's kind of a bold statement. At least what I, when I look at the options, um, what I have the most hope for moving forward, I guess, would be free association. You know, and for those who say they would want independence, I'd say free association kind of allows us to take those small steps of autonomy to ultimately reach the goal of independence. Should the people of Guam decide to go that way? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Dr. Titano, given your platform and your your close bond to historical preservation and cultural awareness. Some people might say, okay, it's a foregone conclusion of what she's going to decide, but you know, we'll, we'll let you actually tell the people exactly how you feel about this. Because a lot of the times people say, I'm very into the environment, I'm very into cultural preservation, and yet, you know, dot, dot, dot. So right. in your own words, uh, how would you side? Well, you know, uh, in thinking about this earlier uh, along the way, I realized I might be, now I might be wrong, but I might be the only candidate that's actually lived in an independent Micronesian um, entity. I lived in Palau for four years, and so I got to see and experience a lot when I was there. And I would say, without having surveyed people formally at all, but from some of the studies that I've read, that for Palauans, they would not give up that independence um, now that they have it. My position has been that it becomes long and complex, right? But uh, I, I do not assess that I would be part of the decolonization vote, so I have not formally opted for one position over the other. I understand the interests in moving forward with independence. I can also understand that some may be interested in free association, and then of course there are other members of the community that feel that statehood is compelling. I think academically, one of the things we would look at for statehood though is it's been 120 years. We've been asking for more um, citizen rights, being part of the actual constitution, and those things have not occurred. If one opts for statehood, it has to be that both sides are agreeing to it. At this point, 120 years later, it looks like the circumstantial evidence is not showing us that the U.S. is very receptive to mm -hmm. that at this point. Free association and independence may have more probability. And just putting it out there, um, it was actually the U.S. that put us on the list for decolonization. And so helping us all just kind of think about that, that it's not just one side, but it has been both sides moving towards this all, right. all in all. Okay, well, I thank you very much, Dr. Kelly Marsh Titano and Julia Santos. Congratulations once more, you can never say that enough, on your performance in the primary and heading into the general. We wish you the very best of luck and we thank you for giving us some of your time. And please do, the both of you, we invite you to jump on our Facebook live stream because there are a lot of questions we couldn't get to because of the limitations yeah. of time. They're gonna jump in and answer you and we are coming right back after this on Facebook so make sure to get out your devices, watch us, because the after party is coming up. We will have our analysts determining how Julius and Kelly did, so stay tuned for that. That's online. We'll see you next time. Furniture provided by Furniture Kathy Style. Men's wardrobe by Royal Bix.
This program lineup is brought to you by Vision Express. As you're walking out onto that stage, just think three minutes and will change your life. Good. Whoa! Where you been? I mean, how good are you? I loved it. You killed it. Yes! Are you ready? Go straight to the semifinals. the best live performances I have ever seen on America's Got Talent. Live from Hollywood, it's America's Got Talent, the semi-finals. Here's your host, Tyra Banks. Everybody, this is AGT, and this is the first semifinal. Yeah, the competition just got tougher, and everybody's got to raise their game again 